We're going to be photographing two-dimensional artwork today. Um, you could do this in the studio here at Parkland. You could do it in your house at home. You just need some very simple materials. You're going to need a couple of lights. At least two is recommended. And if you have them, I would recommend using halogen lights. The lights that we have at the studio, these are the halogen lights in case you need to identify them. They have a, a little light bulb inside and you want to use these because the light they produce is kind of a clearer, more organized light. It's not diffused. It'll give you a nice contrast. It'll help reveal a lot of detail when you're uh, shooting your 2D work. So you want to use those over as opposed to these are also downstairs and kind of look similar. These are LED lights and they're identifiable by the giant LED in them. They're fine lights for 2D, or pardon me, for 3D work, you would use these. Um, but for 2D, I just think they don't, they don't deliver the right quality of light for 2D work. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna locate the spot where you're gonna hang your work. And it's probably best to hang your work right about eye level or whatever, no more than like 50 inches off the ground because you wanna, you wanna be, uh, have the center of your artwork kind of not too high, not too low. Pick a wall, set it up there. If you're downstairs in, in the studio, what I would recommend is using the center piece of one of the tack boards and then trying to line up the center point for your artwork with like one of the lines of tile on the floor. And this becomes important because you need to set your lights at a 45 degree angle to your artwork. So if you've got the line of the tile, you can kind of split the difference and you're gonna put a light at 45 and a light at 45. And the reason you wanna do that is because you want the angle of incidence, which is the light striking your artwork to equal the light, the angle of reflection, which is gonna bounce off. And then in the middle is your, is your camera, right? So you'll be less likely to get reflections from your artwork. So the tiles on the floor make that real easily accomplishable. These lights, while not precisely 45 degrees to the artwork for our demonstration, they, you would have to kind of figure that out. But we're gonna go with this today. And then the head of the light, you kind of wanna have it so that the brightest part of the light that, uh, of the circle of light shines on the center of your artwork, right? So it might be, if you're shooting a lot of different sizes of artwork, it might be best to set up for the largest piece of artwork and then work your way towards the smaller ones, okay? Because if you set for the largest one, you're gonna have all the light kind of set and ready to go. So I'd set these, open these barn doors, set the lights at a 45 degree angle, kind of based on your artwork location. Here's a pro tip. If you're shooting artwork that's oriented vertically and you've got other artworks that are oriented horizontally, just shoot them all horizontally because then you don't have to flip your camera. You just shoot everything rotate it in Photoshop, all right? So we're gonna put this up, we'll put this back up this way. If you're doing this at home and you don't have these lights, uh, what I would recommend is if you go to any big box kind of home improvement store, Home Depot, Menards, Walmart, you can get these aluminum reflector clamp lamps. You get two of those, and then you need to get a halogen light bulb to go into them, okay? so. I think it's GE. GE makes these reveal bulbs and they give a really nice quality of light. They're not quite daylight balanced, but they're close. That would be my kind of workaround for that. And, you know, get the, the highest power ones that you can get, but don't worry about it too much because hopefully you'll be using a tripod and time, time won't matter for your exposure. You'll be able to use a two second, three second exposure. So you don't have to worry about having like a thousand watt light bulb in there. All right, so we've got our artwork on the wall. We've lined up our lights to kind of project at a 45 degree angle. If you can do it, what I normally do is I take like a T-pin and I stick that right, not right in the center of the artwork, but where the center of the artwork, art, artwork would be in the wall. And then I'll turn off one light and the shadow that's cast by the other light, I will mark with like a piece of tape or maybe a little pencil mark. And then I will turn that light off, turn the other light on, and then measure that shadow. And if your lights are even, 
the shadows should be the same distance from the center of that, that pin, okay? If they're not, then that means you need to move one light closer or farther away, and that will help. I guess you could also get complicated and actually measure things with like a tape measure, but who has a tape measure on them all the time? All right, so once you've got that set up, the next thing to do is ensure that you've got a fairly evenly illuminated field of light, okay? And this is another reason why you wanna start with your biggest piece of artwork. All right, so the way I usually do this is I use a gray card. Uh, this high piece, high tech piece of uh, equipment, uh, you can get these, you'll have to mail order them. Um, we have a couple in the studio downstairs. You could also use a piece of white card because all you really want to do is read that the light is kind of even, right? So what I do is I get my camera off my tripod and I'm going to make sure that my ISO is set to 100. I want to set my white balance to a preset white balance. And that's either going to be tungsten if you're shooting under these lights, which is 3200 degrees Kelvin, or if you've got those GE reveal bulbs, they might be closer to daylight. So you might try daylight. There's probably going to be some adjustments that are necessary, but set that all up, pick an aperture somewhere, say like, let's say F8, and then take a couple of meter readings. And all you're going to do is you're going to take a meter reading and you want to adjust it so that the meter is in the center. Okay. Adjust that based on the center of the artwork. So you're going to come here and you're going to look through it and you're going to take your first reading and zero it out. Okay. And then you're going to do this little crazy dance where you go to each corner of like the light area that you're casting and measure that. So then I would, so then I would take this and I would go here and I would take a reading and I would take a reading and I would just double check that the meter didn't move like more than a third of a stop, which is like one little bar in most of your meters. So it should be, if it's a one bar over or one bar under, that's pretty good. You won't see any big difference, but if you go from like the center here to like here and suddenly, you know, it's a whole stop brighter or darker, then you've got a problem. And usually what that is, is your lights are kind of either crossing in a weird way you might need to pull them back so that they cast a bigger patch of light, or you might need to push them in. So there might still be some adjustment there. Once you've got that set though, you'll have the meter reading. This, it, it is ideal to do it with a gray card, okay? Because you could set it for that, and this, taking the reading off the gray card will kind of set the tonal scale, and you won't have to really worry about anything else. If you do it with the white card, You'll have to adjust your exposure because of the way the camera reads the white, it will try and make it reproduce as gray, which means that your pictures will be dark. So then you need to like overexpose them. It's a terrible complication. You should take a photography class and learn how to do that. All right, but let's say you get past that point. <laughs> you get past that point. The next thing is gonna be kind of setting up your camera. You can use pretty much any camera that you've got. If you've got a 50 millimeter lens, that's great. If you've got the kit lens, which is normally 18 to 50 or 55 with most of your cameras, that's fine. What I would suggest is that you kind of zoom in a little bit, not all the way, but kind of midway so that you're kind of replicating a 50 millimeter lens. That will help avoid distortion. Uh, the other thing you wanna do is make sure that the sensor is parallel to your artwork, okay? So one way you can do that is by working on a nice level floor. And yeah, there's a couple of different tricks. So they make these fancy little levels that you can slide into your hot shoe. But if you have a uh, tripod with a level in it, you should level it off. Make sure it's level front and back and then left and right. Uh, if you don't have something like this, you can use like a little line level or just a little torpedo level for like hanging pictures on the wall and just put it on a flat part of the camera and get it so it's level. And what that will do is it will keep your camera parallel to the artwork and you'll avoid kind of things like this where, right, if it's parallel to the artwork, you're going to have a nice rectangular or square shape. 
but if it's tilted, you'll get these weird distortions where it'll become tra trapezoidal. You don't want that because, you know, you want a nice clean representation of your artwork. Once that's all set up, I would take a test shot. Um, be sure to look at the histogram on the back of your camera, and that's just a little graphic representation of what your picture's doing. Uh, you want to make sure that it neither extends over all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You kind of want it to mostly be in the middle. That'll be a good exposure. Once you've done that, uh, if you're using a really slow shutter speed, and usually when I shoot uh, flat work, I wind up using something that's uh, almost two seconds, two and a half seconds long. I like to set the self timer on the camera so that it, it just, it just needs to be a very short self timer, two seconds, five seconds, whatever the shortest amount you, you can set it for. That way you press the button, you could take your hands off, it beeps a couple of times and then it takes the pictures because while you're sitting there holding it, you'll be creating vibrations or even just the act of pressing the button will kind of move the camera and at slower shutter speeds, you'll get some blur, okay? Um, I think that's about it, right? Like the thing I would say is double check your focus. You can use autofocus. You can do manual focus. Um, sometimes I do one of each. It just depends. Uh, leave yourself enough space around the edges so that you can actually crop in later on in Photoshop and come up with a, a system for kind of shooting to make your life easy, right? You're going to shoot everything horizontal. And if you work from big to small or small to big, it'll make your life a lot easier because you won't have to move the camera as often because you'll have to move it back and forth to kind of deal with it because you don't want to be zooming either. So you want to kind of set that and leave it and then take your pictures, move the camera back, move the camera up, whatever. All right. Another thing about the gray card is if you have a gray card, like a, a real gray card, your first frame should include the gray card because that way you'll have a nice clean white balance reference for post-production. You can use the white balance tools in Photoshop or Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Take a reading from this and then apply that reading to all your pictures and they'll all be equally white balanced. You won't have this kind of uh, variety that you get if you use something like your auto white balance. Don't don't use auto white balance. It's better to have everything be wrong and have to correct it because you'll be able to correct it the same degree rather than have everything be kind of slightly different and look okay. That's not good. Um, I think that's about it for 2D stuff.